Today, I want us to be admonished. We sometimes will perform. We go on to evangelize to the outside world. And the sermon has been titled today, The Appointed Day of the Lord is Real. The Appointed Day of the Lord is Real. And just as our, our brother read for us, in 2 Peter chapter 2, chapter 3, verse number 2 and 3, that is where the test was taken from. That you be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, as prophets will come in the last days, working according to their own last. A lot of people in our world today seem to have doubts about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even some who are amongst us feel that Jesus Christ will not be coming. I was in town one day and what I heard was if Christ was in the play, he would have landed by now. And this was the good. And I, I believe most of us have been hearing this. I'm not the only person who has heard this. Most of us do hear this a lot. In the world today, the world has become full of sin, full of iniquities. Why? Because there are a lot of people who don't give regards to God's ways. Today we are surrounded by scoffers, people who refuse to take the Bible seriously when he speaks about judgment and the second coming of Christ. We have a lot of people who are forgotten about the coming of Christ. Last Monday, our lecturer was talking about uh, women settling down before continuing the education. And he made the comment that he doesn't care if the person gets married before getting pregnant or not. So after class, I asked two of my friends that is it right for someone to get pregnant before getting married? And the answer was no. It's not wrong. I asked them a question again and it took them some time to realize that it was a sin for you to get pregnant before getting married. In our world today, we listen to what you repent from a good TV and the common thing that comes in, many of them every time, many of them go in, which That's the common thing that we hear. We don't care whether it's a sin or not. No one has ever asked on the call line that did the person get married or not? No one cares. And this is why the world is going. Shall we take a word of prayer? Our most gracious and everlasting Father, we are much grateful for giving us this day. We are so much thankful. We ask that you let day your ways enter your people's hearts. This we ask you, Son Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A man named General Douglas MacArthur was a general in the American Army. Now it happened that this man was sent to Philippines to help in the World War I. And it happened that sometime during the World War, the Japanese were about to conquer the Philippines. And it was certain that they would conquer the Philippines and take their land. And so the Americans called back their general to the America because they, they knew that the Japanese would surely take over the Philippines. Now, when General Makata was going, this is what he said I will retain. Many people doubted, many people talked of it as a joke. Now, two years later, General Makata came back, conquered, and gave the land back. To the Philippines. 2,000 years, more than 2,000 years ago, Paul sent his only begotten son to die. He did a lot of things throughout this, his life, 33 years of his life. He lived, he washed the feet of his, his disciples. We already discussed that 
last um, Friday talking about putting our discipleship. He came to die for what you and I, the sin that we committed, he came to die for you and I. Now he made mention in John chapter 14, the verse number 3, that he was going that he was going to prepare a place for us and he won't return. Unfortunately, many years has come. Jesus Christ has not returned. And so people think he is never going to return. Now let's analyze time since creation. Let's analyze time since creation. From Genesis chapter 1, creation to the global plan, it had already been 1656 years. From the global plan to the end of the BC era, it had been 2370 years. From creation to the end of the BC era, it had been 4056 years. Now we are 2,024 years after the death of Christ. In total, it has been 6,080 years since creation. How old are you? How old are you? This God who has been living, who has been dead every since creation, till now, did he say he was late? But we who are not maybe not even going to live up to 100 years, claim that Jesus Christ is not coming. And so Paul, Peter, sorry, Peter, writes to remind us. In the verse 1, it's reads, Beloved, I now write you this second epistle, in which I put, in, of which I stand up your minds by way of reminder that you be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets and the commandments of the apostles, of us, the apostles of the Lord, the Savior. We are being reminded many times as Christians as we are, we forget a lot of things. Today we are being taught to go and seek the Lord. How many of us that after uh, right after church, how many of us are not going to give to your various souls? Half of us we are going to live to our various souls. We don't care whether these people are going to be saved or not. We don't. We don't care. In particular, Peter writes to remind us that the doctrines relating to the second coming of Christ is real and that it will, it will happen. In fact, there are a lot of people, a lot of prophets who have prophesied about the coming of Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul talks about the coming of Christ. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, he does say, Revelation chapter 11, the verse number 18, John continues to talk about the coming of Christ. Jesus himself, in Matthew chapter 24, in chapter 25, talks about the destruction of Jerusalem and the second coming. He said, Peter said, we should know first that scoffers will come in the last days. Truly, they are scoffers. Who at all is a scoffer? A scoffer is someone who takes lightly what ought to be taken seriously. And it happened in Genesis chapter 19, the verse number 14. When God was going to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, a Lord told his son in laws that this city was going to be destroyed. And you read in Genesis chapter 19, verse 14, and he tells you he thought of it as a joke. And so they didn't heed to God's advice. And we all know what happened. The city was destroyed. A lot of scoffers have come. After their own last, because of the love they have for the world, they have so much love for sin, they have so much love for the world, that they want us to believe that Jesus Christ is not coming. Because of maybe the sinful acts, maybe the fornicating act that they are going to commit, they want people to believe that there is no Christ. Because they love the world so much, they want us to believe that there is no Christ. Unfortunately, there are some of us who take the word of 
continue like so 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 like in fact very very like how many of us when we have an end of semester exam to write will not take it serious or will not go and write the exam how many of us none of us here right but then some people are us and they are deciding not to even come to church next to be one minute. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, do not forsake the assembly of the saints. We are taking God's word very, very lightly. Very lightly. We don't respect God. We don't. Pray without seasoning. Did you pray today? We are going to spread the bread. It's a commandment from God. How many of us are going to do that? Our conduct and our behavior don't reflect the lives of Christians at all. I knew this person who was, uh, he was very, he's very rich, he's still very rich. And he was supporting the church with money. Uh, anytime that he had the church, I uh, had some projects on the team. He was sponsored and would donate to the church to help the church in whatever they were doing. Now this man started listening to Abraham Ben Moshe, and unfortunately, this man stopped the church, claiming that there is no Christ. And you see the kind of life that this man is living, so appalling, smoking, fornicating. You see, when we don't have life, then Jesus Christ is alive. These are the kind of things that we do. Because when we are with Christ, we are bounded by certain things that Christians will do. But when we claim, when we want to live the world, when we want to live our simple lives, we leave Christ and then we undertake this kind of simple actions. Someone said, an atheist said, that there is no heaven or hell, just a never ending cycle of tarnished brands and pizza deliveries. Yes. And so, since creation started, what do you do? Like, if you are giving birth to, you grow, you can whatever, you can't be here, you write as that, I see your view continue to decrease. <laughs> That's, those are the things that this, the scorpions, the eight things think. They look back over, over the few years, I made a comment, how many years have they been to make such a claim that there is no Christ? How many years? They look back over the few years of their memories and deceive themselves that he hasn't returned and that he never will return. God's word is true. He has never lied and he will never lie. In the verse 5 to 7, it reads, For the brutally forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and water by which the world that, that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and earth, which are now the same, by the same word, and the same fire, until the day of judgment and perdition of the holy men. They willfully forget, not that they are ignorant, they willfully, intentionally forget that this same creation that we are talking about, that when in the promise of discovery, this same creation, God was the one who created the world. And he promised, when he saw that the world was full of sin, he destroyed the earth with flood. He destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And as a matter of fact, he will surely fulfill what he has promised to destroy the earth we currently live in with fire. In the verse 8 to 10, it reads, But beloved, do not forget this one thing. Now with the Lord, one day is as a thousand, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but his long suffering towards us, not willing that any of us should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Our God is so merciful. God is not bounded by our time. He wants us to be saved. All of us. He could have created the world in the instant and chose to use six days. He could have delivered the Israelites from the bondage of the Egyptians 
but he waited 400 years. He could have given the promised land to the Israelites in an instant, but he waited for 40 years. The Lord is waiting for you and I. We need to change our mind. We need to change our mind. We need to repent. He could have given Christ to us even in the Old Testament, even during creation, even when Adam sinned. But in Galatians chapter 4, verse number 4, he waited for the fullness of time before he sent his only important son. He waited for the fullness of time. God was called of us to repent, but not to perish. But not to perish. The day of the Lord will come as a thief, and we should be ready for his return. Beloved, the second coming of Christ is real. Let us not be deceived. To those of us who are suffering because of Christianity, who are going through a lot of things, this world is not our home. This world is not our home. Let us continue to live this life because we have an eternal life, an eternal salvation which the Lord is preparing for you and I. To those of us who think we have some more time, life is short. This year, unfortunately, one time, last Wednesday, I was, I was going home with my aunt and I said, Ah, this neighborhood, why is so many people dying? And the comment I was, Ah, are you working? There are lots of people who are dying. We don't know when we are going to die. We don't know when. And one funny thing is, even though the people do not believe God, they know, as a matter of fact, that we are going to die. In fact, last week, one friend of mine wrote to the status, nothing is promised. And according to him, he said, nothing is promised except death. And as a matter of all of us believe in death. And once we die, we have no opportunity. No chance at all to be saved again. This is the only chance for us to be saved. It's appointed with man to die once, and after that, judgment. In Luke chapter 16, we read of the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Now we read that the rich man had, we always know the purple lines, and Lazarus, who was covered with salt, yearning to be fed, to be fed with the, the uh, left over food that fell from the man's um, plate. It happened that these two people, the rich man and Lazarus, died, and the rich man was buried, and Lazarus was taken into Abraham's bosom. Now, the rich man, the rich man had been taken to Tartarus, said that he was suffering, and asked Abraham to dip his hands into water so that he can have a few of water. Charlie, you can see that hell is really, really dangerous. And so he asked, and he didn't get water because between him and Abraham, it means there is a great war fixed. And so when this man saw that he had nothing to do, he could do nothing to get water, he asked, he begged that he had in his father's house his siblings. I also believe the same, and that he wants someone who has died to go back into the world to preach to the people to repent of their sins. And Abraham told him, There are a lot of people out there who are preaching the word of God, you should hear to it. Beloved, the, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. To us who are unbaptized, this is the if nothing at all, we don't know when we die. And when we die, we don't have any chance to repent of our sins. We do not know when the trumpet is going in to sound. In our English hymn, in Exodus number 215, in the fourth chapter, which reads, Help me to watch and pray, and on thyself rely. Assured, if I my trust tree, I shall forever die. This trust that the Lord assures us, this trust that we are supposed to have in the Lord, to obey His commandments whatsoever, if we betray that trust, we shall forever die. The eternal death. We call 
continue to guide us and protect us as we journey through this world, so that in the end, we will all inherit the kingdom of God. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we are so much grateful that your way has come to us today. We ask that you let these words enter our hearts, that we continue to meditate upon your words, so that in the end, when you come, we shall, we shall all go into the place you are preparing for us. This is the very more we ask through the Son of Jesus Christ, that may your purpose will be done in our lives now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.